What's going on guys? Jake Teasel with Latest Mustang and Automotive News. Today, I'm looking at a 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm wondering if I should purchase one of these. Now, you know, we're gonna go check it out. We're gonna go um, basically see if it's a good deal or not because it's got some special things on it that uh, are very rare for Land Cruiser, including that little switch on the left-hand side that locks the front and rear axles. Um, hard to, and it looks like it might be a good deal. It's priced right. It's at four thousand uh, dollars. It's local, and the way I found it was I was going to my client over in Hollywood at five a.m. in the morning, and I had been like thinking what I want to do for twenty twenty. Like I really still want a Land Cruiser, another project, uh, another like another truck to go off roading in and everything. I pull up to my client's house and I look up and there's a Land Cruiser for sale. And if you already know, Land Cruisers are pretty rare. And then to find them locally for sale on the curbside is even more rare. So I was like, oh. And I was like, well, I've never really had an 80 series. But I was like, you know okay. what? Um, I never really considered getting an 80 series because it's the inline six. And I really prefer the V8. The 100 series Dude, looks more been... reliable. It's got more power. Seems like it's a better cruiser uh, because most of the time you're just driving them on the streets, you know, you're not off road only 5% of the time or so. So I was imagining that the 100 series would be a better um, driver. So, but you know what? This Land Cruiser looks pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I used to have Mark III and Mark IV Supers. So that old school Toyota inline six cylinder i still there's something about those inline sixes i don't know if it's just in my head probably is just in my head but so if you don't know the the 94 and 93 land cruisers i believe uh were 4.5 liter inline sixes so you know they make v6s that are smaller than that now the tacoma is like a 3.5 liter so this is an inline six 4.5 and then uh, i think 96 97 they had a 4.7 liter inline six which is the same uh, engine displacement as the V8 that they ended up putting in the 100 series, which was um, from 1998 to 2007. All right, so here's the truck. It's a 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser. And when I first checked it out, I was like, okay, this thing has been pimped out by Pimp My Ride, MTV, whatever. Um, so he painted these hubcaps like this green color. He painted the grill like this, you know, he did all this this stuff which and then he put these chrome things on here so and my eye in my brain i was like okay he wants four thousand dollars for this truck i can obviously negotiate him down and these little things here these are easy to to fix this is easy fix stuff you just you just rattle can these things but then you start thinking to yourself okay what's actually wrong with the truck though if um you know if if he's done these things like this i was like is this removable or not and obviously he didn't drill into the side this is just a stick on thing he actually added this um stick on four wheel drive badge on the side as well um but i was looking at i was like this looks like original glass back here um maybe this could be a possibly a good deal and i started opening my head i started researching the 80 series for three or four days um so you know what here's the engine now the engine actually looks pretty decent um you know i couldn't really find anything there's a little bit of an oil leak back here so this is a 1994 and it has 157,000 miles now the only problem though is as we go into these videos and these pictures this is me talking to the owner of the truck now Everything looks as it should be. I mean, it's a 25 year old truck. There is a oil, there is some oil back there, some seepage, but you know, what I did notice was that the battery connections here were loose. They were just hand tight. So apparently I think he bought this at an auction, to be honest. I think that's what happened. He probably just put a battery. He says it hasn't ran in two years. His wife fell out of it. She wants to sell it. Um, you know, I think, I think essentially what he did is just got this truck at an auction. Now, there's factory paint on the truck on, mo on, on most of it. I was trying to see here, I'm not doing very good at recording obviously, I was trying to um, hold the camera while the, while the seller was standing there without being too obvious that I'm totally inspecting his car and telling him all the things that are wrong with it. But I was looking at the frame up here of the, um, 
the radiator, uh, the support here, and seeing if it had been damaged up here. And it didn't look like it had been. Um, now, it could have been like 25 years ago, but I don't know. It looked like there was a bolt missing that fender possibly, so the fender had possibly been replaced. That's the seller. Um, and basically, that looks like factory paint if you ask me. Um, you can kind of tell by if it's been wrinkled up too much, which it doesn't look like. It just looks like it's been well used. Now, the only thing that bothers me here, though, is this is really gunked up. Um, but I still don't think that that's been repainted. I think that that's just... Um, now, it has been repainted right there. If you look, that's all orange peel. Do you notice this? See the texture there? See how it looks like the skin of an orange? See if you look into the reflection, it doesn't look like like this one. If you look at the reflection here, if you look at the reflection here, it's actually a pretty good reflection. Uh, you can just see the swirl marks and stuff. That's factory paint. That's what factory paint looks like. It, it you know, 20 year old factory paint looks like that, generally speaking. Um, but now orange pill basically um, looks like that. And you can tell if a car's been repainted if you see um, discrepancies and you know this quarter panel has orange pill and then this door doesn't have orange pill well then why not well because this has been wrecked and repainted and then when i looked on the door it actually said california replacement vin so you know i started looking at the door trim and all the door panels and i was looking for vin numbers i was trying to figure out where it had been wrecked the floorboards were kind of wet I mean, this is a pretty rough truck. I know it doesn't look like it from the outside, but the more I started digging into it, the more I started realizing. So I think all this door, all the way around, except for that the driver's quarter, but now here we've got this water leaking, and I can't figure out, because the air conditioner doesn't work on this truck, but it has a severe, I don't know if this is condensation, I don't know what this is. I put my finger in it, and it had oil residue, but it was mostly water. I think the oil was just from the dripping off of the transfer case. I don't know if water's leaking from the front of the engine, down the back of the engine, onto the transmission, and it drips off the transfer case, or if there's some type of, um, I, don't, I don't know where the water could be coming from that far back on the engine. Now, I said this truck hasn't ran in two years, which I believe him because you can see cobwebs on the under the carriage. This truck doesn't look like it's ever been taken um, off-road if much at all but it definitely has a water leak under here so I would say the ex the air conditioner didn't work it does have some type of a water leak now I don't know if that's a if that's an issue or if you could just jump in this truck and drive it on a hundred thousand miles without putting any money into it but regardless um, this is the overall what's going on with this truck. It's got a salvage title, I'm pretty sure, because it has a VIN replacement ID tag on the door. This has been obviously repainted because of all that orange peel. So I'm, I tried to run the VIN on, um, on Google and try to research, and I couldn't find much without having to pay for a Carfax. And I'm not to the point where I'll run a Carfax before I buy it if I do decide to buy it, but I think what I'm going to do is he's asking 4000 but I would really only be willing to pay 2000 possibly 2500 for this truck as long as I knew that this water leak was not a mechanical issue that would keep me from driving the car. I would like to be able to purchase this car and drive it, take it off-roading, and then turn around and get my money back out of it and sell it as is without putting any money into it at all. I would basically buy the truck, I would remove this, I would put black windshield uh, wipers on it, I'd probably just paint those black with spray paint, that would probably be cheaper than buying windshield wipers all the way around. I would take these off, I would spray these, um, if I could find a silver to match, which I probably can't, and I probably can't find a way to strip those unless you find some type of paint stripper, um, I would paint those, I would probably just remove these center caps. I would get a blow dryer and get this nice and hot and some fishing line and I would remove that. I would repaint these, excuse the phone, I would repaint these um, back to factory color. I'd probably have to paint them black. And then um, I would take the carpet out and totally reclean it. The other thing that I didn't show you guys was in the passenger floorboard, there was oily water. It was wet on the passenger floorboard. So obviously he's got some type of heater core issue. I don't know if that, I bet that's what it is. It's the heater core is causing that water to um, 
leak from the heater core and somehow also get back down here. But um, as of this morning, the truck was still sitting on the side of the road um, where I saw my client. You know, just from 10 feet away, this truck doesn't look bad if you would repaint this tr all these green things and the chrome things. If you take all that off, try to put it back to factory, you know, from a glance, this truck is not in bad shape. And if the engine only has 150,000 miles and the transmission and everything else, this car could last another 150,000 miles. So the value proposition is you've got a four wheel drive truck that has, I didn't get to show it in the video, but this has front and rear lockers. And that's kind of rare. So the AC doesn't work though. It's got some water leak. It's got a salvage title. This has got orange peel. It's been re repainted, but I didn't see any rust. It does. The pros would be that it does have about 150,000 miles and it looks like the drivetrain could be solid as long as I figure out what that water issue is. So it's a rough, it's kind of a rough deal here um, because even if you did fix this truck up and put some big tires on it and try to flip it for like say eight grand or something like this, at the end of the day, it still has a salvage title. So you might only get 4,000 out of it. So if, if he would sell it to me for 2,500, I think I might do it guys. What do you think? Um, because this, this engine bay doesn't look bad in my opinion. Um, I took the oil cap off and looked under here and looked for the, um, sludge basically to see if the head gasket had been blown or not. And I didn't see that. Um, you know, it's a Toyota. They're pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Generally speaking. Um, I didn't hear any rod knock. It did idle a little bit rough and it did stall, but I believe you can probably turn this screw and, uh, turn up the idle speed somewhere. Um, this does remind me of the Mark three Supra. Some of these fixtures and fittings and stuff look similar. They were using the same technology back then. So guys, you know, for 2,500 bucks or 3,000, this could be my off-road beater. But I'm not going to buy this thing if it's not going to be reliable. And I don't want to buy it and have to put 1,000 or 2,000 or $3,000 into it. That would be a loss in my book. Because at the end of the day, I think the maximum amount I'd be able to resell it for is 2,500 or 3,000 as it is. So I would have to get it right. But uh, the power seat didn't work also for whatever reason. There's a lot of things wrong with this truck. The, in, the the column was removed. I think the car had been stolen in 1995. There's a lot going on with this truck. This would, this could possibly be, it's definitely a fixer upper. It could possibly be a headache. And you know, if the head gasket blew or the transmission went out, that would be, that would be a lot. But anyways, guys, I just want to make this video for the 80s series uh, Land Cruiser enthusiast or for the channel and just kind of show you what's been going on on my end. Um, I'm always looking for deals if I can find them. And, um, I thought this was unique and I checked it out the other day. So I just wanted to share it with the channel. So, uh, let me know if you guys think I should get it for the channel and put some 33s on it and, uh, test out that front and rear lock and differential and make some more videos. All right. Thanks for watching guys. And, uh, don't forget to like, and subscribe. Have a good one.